Lamentations chapter 3 I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. Jeremiah is an eyewitness. Now he's going to get complained here a little bit. But we'll see in the midst of this chapter. He'll end his complaining. But we're all complainers. We're all human. He has led, led me and brought me into darkness but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turned his hand against me all the day. Not against him. Not against Jeremiah, but the nation, the wicked doer. But when you're sitting amongst destruction and desolation and judgment, what are you to think? My flesh and my skin has made old. It's, it's a true proven fact that with destruction, misery, sorrow, anxiety, all these things age your body. He has broken my bones. And it's not little broken bones. It's just he has no strength. Jeremiah has been broken by what has happened to Judah in Jerusalem. He's ready to melt as like his liver being poured out or his kidney we read last night. Jeremiah is, is, is a, a puddle of goo. He's standing in awe of what has happened to Judah and Jerusalem. Now what happened to Exodus, the Egyptians, was their own fault. They were against Israel, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And yeah, here is the people of God, worst off. We don't read about buildings being destroyed in Egypt. We don't read about walls coming down. We read about bugs and locusts and frogs and disease. What happened in Judah and Jerusalem is far worse than what happened in Egypt. He has builded against me and encompassed me with gall, bitterness, and travail, that travail of pain as a woman. He has set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. There's no light in Jerusalem anymore. There is no gold reflecting off the temple. It has been carried away. He has hedged me about that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. He's saying I'm, I'm in the midst of a hedge. And it's all around me. I can't go nowhere. I'm tied. Uh, wasn't Jeremiah just freed from prison? Wasn't he just let loose out of bondage? He's having a little pity moment. Unless he has taken on himself to be speaking of Jerusalem herself. He has per per pers uh, personified himself as the city. Then we can see where he's coming from. Broken bones would be the cities, the walls, the people. I mean, not the people. The, everything that's that's stone and wood that would have been broken. And God's hand is against the city, and there is darkness. He has hedged me about that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. Also when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. I really don't think that's Jeremiah. But if he's in a pity party, if he's complaining, if he maybe he thinks it's maybe he's praying for the, the city to come back, maybe he's praying for the people to get right. He has enclosed my ways with huge stones. He has made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. Reference to Antichrist. No, no, no matter where I go, there's something going to haunt me. Not for my good. He has turned aside my way and pulled me in pieces. He has made me desolate. He could be speaking about the city. He has bent his bow and set me as a mark for, an arrow, for the arrow. And that's 
description of the city. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reign. What causes you to be steered? I was in derision to all my people and their song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drunken with wormwood, and it causes bitterness. He has also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He has covered me with ashes, no inability to eat, mouth pain, jaw pain. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forget prosperity. And it's probably the city. Jerusalem means the city of peace. It ain't peace no more. And I said my strength. And my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, double bitterness. My soul has then still in remembrance and is humble in me. It should be humbling in the Lord. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. Even in trouble, there's hope. Now the hope is found in 22, 24, 25, and 26. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Jerusalem is not utterly wiped off the map. The Jews are not done with. They're not finished with. Because his compassions fail not. It's like Jeremiah answering to the city. Answering to what has been said. Listen, you're not done. You're not finished. You're not. There's still hope. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. What is new? His compassion. His mercy. Isaiah 30 verse 8. And that's the hope. Even amidst troubles in your life, if you are the Lord, He has mercy for you. He's not going to consume you. And He still has compassion. And the worst thing He can do is, is make you dead and come home to glory. Won't that bring a smile to your face? It'll bring you out of the lamentations into joy. But then again, that's the end of all your work. That's the end of your rewards. I mean, as far as your rewards, getting new rewards. That, I mean, once you die, God can't use you anymore, and that's it. I mean, isn't a few lamentations in your life uh, bearable to get a new crown, another crown? The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Oh. Therefore will I hope in him. Get your mind off the lamentations and get your mind on Christ. And I know it's hard. I've been through it. In chaos and calamity, there's hope. And it's hard. It's very hard. But get yourself back in the word. Get yourself back in prayer. Get yourself in the Lord. Peace. Long-suffering and patience. Is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. There is your patience. To the soul that seeketh him in God's time. you got to realize God has not forsaken you. It may be a tribulation. It may be a correction. It may be a thing from the enemy called Satan. But God has it all control. And in the end of Job 42 chapters, it does come out okay. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait patience for the salvation of the Lord. So that salvation is not the salvation of your soul. That's a salvation from the troubles that you're in. Realize one day, eventually, all your troubles will have a salvation. Pain and suffering. There are no pain and sufferings in New Jerusalem. Tears. God shall wipe away our tears. People lying about you. God says that those that liars will have their into the lake of fire. You've been stolen from. Thieves will have their part in the lake of fire. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke. It's a challenge. The challenge in his youth. 
easy life is a child is childhood that's not proper. Be prepared. Get experience. You know, if you pamper a child according to this verse, he, he's not going to do well in life. He's going to want a pampered life, and when troubles come along, he's going to want somebody else to take care of it. He, the man, verse 27, sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he has bored it upon him. Him is God. You're waiting on God. You know, Job was doing great until his friends showed up. And it said seven days later with his friends there, then he opened up his mouth, and then all, all the folly came out. You know, you don't need in troubles and trials and problems in life, you don't need to go run to people. You need to run to God and just spend a little quiet time alone with God and say, God, what on earth? I don't mean, why are you doing this? Because, you know, why do I get this? I'm saying, Lord, why, what is the value of the learning of what I'm going through? He says, alone, well, keep his silence because he has bored it upon him. Yet you've given it to God. Take my yoke. Cast your cares upon me. Suffering may make you say things you don't want to. So just, bear, just go off to you alone with the Lord. You may say something to your husband. You may say something to your children that you're going to regret later. You're scared. You know why a snake rattles its tail? It's scared. You know why a dog will, will uh, growl at you? It's scared. And you know when they'll attack? When they're scared. He put his mouth in the dust. Keep your mouth quiet. If so be, there may be hope. He didn't say he gave his mouth to the other ears. He said he gave his mouth to the dust. Remember what you are. Remember your frame. God remembers who you are. Now watch this. You got real problems in your life? You really... Really got problems? Well, guess who verse 30 is about? He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach. You got to remember, no matter what you're going through, the Lord Jesus Christ suffered more. Well, Jesus Christ, he didn't have third degree burns. He, you know, he didn't have you know a missing leg. He didn't have the, the person I'm married to. He didn't have the children I got. He doesn't work for the place I work. Yeah, but Jesus Christ went into hell. How do you think that felt? Do you think Jesus Christ went into hell with with uh, ice cubes and air conditioners strapped to him, or do you think he felt the full force of the flames of hell while he deposited our sins? Do you think it was air conditioned for him? It said that he suffered. Isaiah 53 says he suffered. He took on our, our chastisements. He took on our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. I believe Jesus Christ suffered more pain than any man has ever suffered pain. And if you put a whole troop of army men together in a wartime, he still suffered more. And right in the midst of the troubles and problems of life, we read from Jeremiah a prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what's supposed to be the middle of all your troubles and problems? The Lord Jesus Christ. And as the sufferings and problems that he went through in life, he can really wrap your arms around you and say, I know what you're feeling. You got a back injury that no one else has? Your spouse, your pastor, your friends may not have ever had a back injury. Can you accomplish yourself to what the Lord Jesus Christ suffered with the, the cat of nine tails being ripped across his back? I mean ripped. Don't you think you can go up to Jesus and say, Jesus, you know how I feel. Remember before you went to the cross? Remember when you carried that cross, Lord, and you fainted under the problem, under that burden? For the Lord will not cast off forever justice upon sin. These are his people. We are his children. Not forever. Though it may seem like it. 
For though he caused grief, it, may, it comes from God, but it's because of sin. Yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. You know how you would read verse 32 if it was Satan? But though he caused grief, that would be the way it would be written for Satan. Satan has no compassion. Satan has no mercy. Never mind a multitude of mercy. He totally annihilated Job. If not his animals, his livestock, and everything like that. He killed his seven children one afternoon. Then he has the nerve to walk up to the God and say, let me go get him. God said, no. Well, let me give him boils. And on top of that, he walks up to Mrs. Job and says, hey, what kind of man you got, are you married to? Here's some words for you to go say to him. If that's not enough, he tells his three friends, hey, why don't you go see Job? Don't you have an appointment with him? Can't think of his name now, but I bet you Job was working on that that, that fourth guy. Why don't you say something now? Why don't you? No, I'm just gonna wait out these men, let them talk. It's not my time. Come on, you gotta say something now. Come on, speak. No, no, no. I'll wait till it's my time. For he does not afflict willingly. Uh oh. Well, he's not doing it willingly. So what else is he doing it for? Because of you or because of Satan? nor grieve the children of men. That verse says that God is long-suffering and not willing that any should perish. Satan begged me to do it with God's saying. Your sins made me do it. How's that? Did I word that correctly? Satan begged me to do it. Your sins made me do it. God gave us 1 John 1 9 to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord appointeth, approveth not. Your sins have crushed you, your sins have brought you in prison, your sins have brought you in the wrong way. Your sins cannot face the Most High. Your sins have subverted you. And none of your sins are approved of God. Who is he that saith and comes to pass when the Lord commands it not? He's talking about the false prophet. Thus saith the Lord, or the Ouija board, or my crystal, or my tea leaves, or whatever it is. You going to make it happen when God says, I, no, I'm not lying. Was Job going to die when God told Satan, no, you can do whatever you want, you spare his life. Could Satan kill him? Absolutely not. Because God did not command it. God commanded, all right, go after his material things. Go ahead. Satan did all he could and got rid of all he did. Why is my life spared? Why am I still in these miseries and trouble? Because God, because God commanded not yet for you to die. Every day you wake up, you have a reason to live for the Lord. Another chance, another opportunity. You just got to find out what, listen, even if it's placing one gospel track out, that's one gospel track less than no gospel track. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. The match with Isaiah 45, 7. God does not speak evil. When you think of evil as sin, the results of your sin bring evil. And God does speak good. And God does speak into judgment as such as waters to flood the whole earth in Noah's time. And it was evil. 
People and destruction happened, but that was the people's fault, and God gave them an open door. God, through Jeremiah, gave Judah an open door. Just go to Babylon. Let us search and try our ways and, re and turn again to the Lord. Now, there's a verse on repentance. There's a verse on how to get out of your lamentation. There's a verse to get right with God. Repent. Turn again. Do a U-turn and face God. Let us lift up our hearts, not our head, not our education, with our hands unto God in the heavens. Plural. Come to God not with a bull. Come to God with not a ram. Come to God with your heart in your hand and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I don't know what to do. Will you take this wicked thing that has adultery, that has fornication, that has idolatry, that has murder, that is thinking of thoughts that shouldn't be thinking of? Will you take this thing and fix it for me? I have a heart condition. We have transgressed. That's repenting. And have rebelled. That is acknowledging your sin. Thou hast not pardoned. Uh oh. There are people who can come with their sins, acknowledge their sin, and not be pardoned. Paul tells us in Corinthians that there's two sorrows there's godly sorrow and there's worldly sorrow. You know, when a, when a child comes up to you and says, Mom, I wasn't supposed to take that cookie. And I took a cookie. And I'm sorry. I know it's wrong. You can pardon that child. I forgive you. I, I thank you very much for telling me. Or you can walk in the kitchen. And their hands go behind their head. Hand. I mean their hands go behind their back. What do you got there? Nothing. What do you got? Let me see your hand. And there's a cookie. Where'd you get that cookie? From the cookie jar. Didn't I tell you not to take the cookie from the cookie jar? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Is that a pardon? No, he has to confess. There's no willingness. You were caught in the act. And you probably, oh, I'm sorry. If I say I'm sorry with tears, you won't spank me. You won't take away my computer. I won't, have, I won't be able to go to, you know, I'll maybe go to the dance Saturday night. You gotta really, when you're soul winning and you say, oh, I got one soul for Christ, you better make sure that all the things are right. You better make sure that re that person has repented rightly and knows what they're repenting of, not just being caught or not just to say this prayer to make you happy. You better bring judgment and hell into the picture. Did that person really, really confess their sins, or did it transgress, we have rebelled, and God has not pardoned. God has not pardoned you. You're not saved. It's not washed. That means you can come, you can say, I'm sorry, and not mean it. If you've been a parent long enough with children up to teens and 18s and, and adulthood, you know what apology not meaning means. And you'll get more of them apologies than you'll get the child that just come up to you. I did something wrong. I'm sorry. If you could write a book, an interesting book about this subject, and I know we're parked here for a little bit of time. But if you write a book and get every judge in this nation and say, I just want to talk about two people that stand before your bench. Well, what's that? People who are really sorry, really sorry, or the people who are sorry just because they're standing in front of you. Now, we went to a court case one time, us as a family. I won't drink your honor. I'm so sorry. We're not going to do it. Oh, you're going to release me today? And you know where him and his wife are going to go that night after being convicted of four DUIs. And by the reactions of his wife walking on the courtroom, you know exactly where they're going to be that night. You gotta realize, you gotta understand, there are some 
people who have repented and they're not repented right. Talk to any law court judge. They'll, they'll tell you the difference. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain, thou hast not pitied. Do you see do you see forgiveness there after their transgression and rebellion has been no they still get hell well the, that preacher or that Christian told me I, I'm, I'm guilty that's not good enough what's your heart bring your heart in your hands You know, there are two things that a Christian, true Christian, should do as soon as he's saved. I'm sorry, listen, you may mark me as a hypocrite or anything like that, but I'm going to the book of James. If, if these two things have not happened after a person is proclaimed to be saved and receive Christ as Savior, I don't believe you're a Christian. I, I, I may put too much on, but I'm sorry. First thing, you better go out and witness to somebody afterwards. And number two, you better put one at least one sin down and walk away from it. You can't be happy in your sins. You can't enjoy your sins. You got trouble. And when you do sin, if you're sorry and you, it's bothering you that you've done it, and you're saved, you're just battling a battle with the flesh and the spirit, Paul tells us. I mean, when, when you got somebody, you you can't stand that work. And oh, that, Lord, I'm sorry I acted late. I'm so sorry, Lord. And, just, and, and you know, I've got a telephone call, some trouble at work, and it's like, oh, Lord God, will you help that person? And a half hour later, oh, I can't stand them. Oh, I hope I'm not working with that person. Lord, the only thing that can get them right is you. See, their salvation. I'm on your behalf. You've got the flesh, but you got the, the fruit of the Spirit. got to be a change doesn't the Bible say a new creature going all the world and, and, and preach the gospel to every creature mark 16 that's the first time you saw that reference hmm. um, thou has covered thyself with a cloud and read chapter 2 verse 1 the city's got a cloud and God has a cloud And yet by day the cloud led them through the wilderness. That our prayer should not pass through. So your life, your prayer life, friend, who's ever listening to this, your prayers, I'm trying to think of a word, that's why I'm, I'm um, your prayers may be jammed by God. You know when the military, they're trying to talk and the enemy jams the, the communication line? Your prayer life may be jammed because of your sin. You may think God's listening to you. You may think God's not listening to you. And there's a cloud between you and him. Are you coming to God with your heart? Are you saved to... Well, what does Romans 10, 9 and 10 say? For with the heart, man believes in the righteousness. So you got got to really be sincere when you're a soul winner and you're dealing with someone. You better make sure that it is a heart issue because you may be leading someone thinking they're saved and say, Lord, Lord, did we do this? Lord, Lord, didn't I confess my sins? And you don't want Jesus saying unto him, depart from me. I never knew you. Well, Lord, didn't I say the ABC one two three prayer? Didn't I follow the Bonson Dot? Yeah, you just didn't bring your heart. I'll deal with the person that was dealing with you. I'm dealing with you right now. There are many people in this world today alive who think they're saved and they're not saved, and you can't deal with them because they're saved by their own words. And you look at their lives. I don't think so. 
James. Faith and works. Thou hast made us as an offscurring and re refuse in the midst of the people. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Now, this is not all they that live godly shall suffer persecution, is it? These are all people who live ungodly and are getting their, their tongues lashed by the enemy. Ah, look what's happening to you. I saw what you preacher did with that piano player. I know about the hypocrites in the church. I know that Christian businessman over there skims the top and skims his people. I know about that Christian employer over there cuts the wages in half. And I know about that Christian child that, you know, he smokes the dope in the bathroom. I know about all that. And that's not living godly, suffer persecution. Fear and a snare, a trap is called upon us. Desolution and destruction. They're acknowledging everything has happened to them because, but they have not repented right. We've got caught. Our pants are down. Our city is destroyed. Our temple is destroyed. What can we do to get it back? How about bring your heart, God said. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. I want this queen of heaven is still on their mind. My eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Now we're back to Jeremiah. That's Jeremiah speaking, at least. We know that. My eye trickleth down and ceases not without any intermission. How long did Jeremiah cry? How many tears? David says, put my tears in a bottle. How many bottles would Jeremiah need? And you ever wonder if God's going to count your tears and, and put them up to the judgment? How many mother's tears are going to be judged against a man at the great white throne judgment? Uh, no one told me. Yeah. What's his gallon jug? This is the tears of your mother. Every night, just before she goes to bed, gets down on her knees. This is the tears of your dad because of what you've done. This is the tears of your siblings. I hope this is the tears of your pastor. Jeremiah's tears are, I don't know how much it is. Till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. My eye effect, effective my heart. I don't know what that means because of all the daughters of my city I don't know what Jeremiah is saying there what can what can the eyes and, and tears and sorrow do with the heart is, is it broken is it in despair is it in agony you know when, when two couples oh we're heartbroken we broke up not like Jeremiah I, I would assume to believe that after this, Jeremiah fasted and prayed. I would assume that Jeremiah sought the Lord much more than he ever. You know, you come to God more in your miseries and your troubles than you do in normalcy. My enemy, cease, my enemies, cease, oh, excuse me, chase me sore like a bird without cause. You know, they were taking birds and selling them in the temple. Because you needed a dove if you couldn't bring anything else. So here's a dove, you give us money. Seeking profit. They have cut off my life in the dungeon. Remember that? And are cast as a stone upon me. Waters flowed over my head. Then I said, I am cut off. Remember it was in the mire? We're going back to when Jeremiah was put in prison by his people. I called upon thy name. Does this remind you of anybody? How about Jonah? 
You know, when the weeds are wrapped around my head. Oh Lord, out of the low dungeon. And that's a literal dungeon. That is a literal dungeon that he was put in. Remember the Ethiopian guy there had to get some cash cloths and pull him out. He told the king he's going to die. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thy ear from my breathing. Jonah stopped breathing. Jonah died at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, Fear not. Now who spoke those two words very often in his life? Jesus. O oh Lord. And every time the disciples were in trouble, he spoke, Fear not. Jeremiah is in trouble. O oh Lord, thou hast pleaded the cause of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. Now the tones pick it up. Da -da -da -da. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my cause. Jeremiah is saying, listen, after all you've done for me, everything is coming. I'm a sinner. I took part in the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Judah. Part of my sins were, were that trouble. He does not exclude himself. Thou hast seen all their vengeance. And all their imaginations against me. We're back to Jeremiah. Remember his own home folk of Antioch? Let's kill him. Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. Did you see that woman pinching you? Did you see those people telling you to shut up? Did you see those people stop yelling? Oh, get out of here. Blah, blah, blah. And thou hast heard their reproach. God hears it. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. Let's sign a petition, get rid of them. Let's call the police on them. Let's get, let's get them out of here. God sees it. And I'm nowhere near a Jeremiah. But I'm doing what God has told me faithfully to do and everything that happens against me. How can you take it? God's taking care of it. You know what God's doing that I can't do? He's writing their names down and writing what they're saying. And he's right. Oh, yeah, line number 432, uh, your name, your address, the city, in that petition. And you signed it with, with great joy and plea to get rid of that guy. My word. Uh, number 47, you signed that because your husband forced you to sign it. You didn't really want to do it, but he made you. I saw that. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You're going to walk over and tell him you're a Christian, but you enjoy sitting and listening to the music and the bad jokes. I, I wrote that down. Behold, they're sitting down. <laughs> you know what they do over there? They sit. And they're rising up. You know what they do? They get up to make business over there. I am their music. I write this song. They make the sad people. I am music. That's that song about Satan. You know, there are probably people who, who, because of our ministry, have sung songs about us. How many people we meet with guitars and all that? And fought us. And we become their ballad. Isn't it great that someone has sung a song about street preachers? I bet you if you do a search on any music thing or even YouTube uh, songs about street preachers I bet you see a lot of hits and not for good render I bet you find a lot of hits about churches render unto them a recompense oh look at what Jeremiah is doing shame on you love your enemies as yourself Jeremiah smack you in the face wow Lord do you see what they've done to me yeah I see what they do there go get them Ooh. I can't do that as a Christian. Jeremiah could in the Old Testament law. I can't. O Lord, according to the work of their hands, give them sorrow of heart. I can't do that. Thy curse upon them. I can't do that. And he's talking about his own folks. He's talking about the folks that God told Jeremiah, don't pray for them. I'm not going to listen. Give them sorrow of heart, thy curse upon them. Persecute and destroy them in the anger from under the heavens of the... 
Hasn't there been enough destruction, Jeremiah? Jeremiah is ripping mad. Lord, go get him. Some of them are still alive, evidently. And Jeremiah wants revenge. Shame on you, Jeremiah. You're supposed to be a saint. You're supposed to live godly. Yeah, Jeremiah is a man just like you and me. He just had enough nerve to put it down in a book. I wouldn't have enough ner nerve to put that down in writing. Someone may publish it. We're all human. Our actions are all the same. We don't ever think of God first. We think of me, myself first. You know, if you cause pain and affliction to me, I'm not going to, oh, God, this is how great this is. No, no, man. You, I had a guy the other day get in my face. He's going to punch me. And I'll tell you, I wasn't thinking about God. I'm thinking about where I could get him. I was ready to duke it out. I was ready to be a kung fu buddy. That guy was like, I ain't Christian. That would have been the first thing somebody would probably said, that's not Christian, right? No, it's not. I need to repent, need to get right. But I got examples in the Bible. Someone smacked Paul in the face. Oh, why are you slapping slap oh, Paul a little, a little edgy over there, didn't you? But then again, Jesus said, angry without a cause. Did Jeremiah have a cause? Oh, yeah, he has a great cause. Would I have a cause for someone to punch me? Yes. That would have been a cause. Did Paul have a cause? Yes, he had a cause. But is it right? That's between you and the Lord. 